I did the 100 days of code challenge two times in a row, which means I coded every day for 200 days straight, and I'm still gonna continue. I'm going for the whole year, no one can stop me. I've been documenting my journey on Twitter here, and that is where you can go to see what exactly the challenge looks like in forms of like what exactly my tweets look like day to day. But I want to go over in this video, basically what languages I learned in the last 200 days, classes I took, and then some tips and tricks for you guys if you want to do this challenge as well, because I 100% recommend it. If you're new here, I'm Liz. I'm a data science manager at Intel, but my background is in mechanical engineering. So I've been really trying to up my coding skills, especially because I transitioned into data science. So if you're interested in all that stuff and navigating your life in your 20s, feel free to subscribe. Otherwise, let's jump into it. So the languages I learned in the last 200 days, the first one is an add-on framework to like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and that is called React. It's basically a way to like organize your code and make it into components and things like that. Then I learned SQL, which is a database language, basically how you store data. Python, which is more data science-y, it's like how you manipulate data. It does a lot of different things. And then now I'm currently working on C Sharp and Blazor, which I basically want to make web applications using basically through Microsoft. Now, as I mentioned before, React is a framework. So it's basically a way to organize your code to an industry standard level, which you can also make things animated. It's really cool. I made a cool weather application using React, but the where I learned it was actually this company called She Codes. So it's basically geared towards a women, which we love. But I do feel like if you're a dude, you should totally take it because it's so good. The thing is, the classes start at a particular date and the homework is due on certain days. The best part though is the solution videos because not every Udemy class or online class has the solution videos where you can follow along. And as long as you attempt the problem, you see the solution videos and it's just, the class is so smooth. 100% recommend it. I now have an affiliate link link below. I didn't used to have one when I was filming on YouTube, so it's kind of cool that they are working with me now so I can recoup some of the money I spent on those freaking classes. The next language I learned was SQL. Now again, people call it SQL, SQL, whatever. It's databases. It's basically rows and columns, okay? You're thinking like Excel spreadsheet, but like on crack. So that is like fundamental for backend development. Like everyone needs to know SQL. Like it's, I swear to God, it's every, it's everywhere. They all talk about it. So I just wanted a basic class, which I took one for free on COD Academy. I did a whole video on the differences between the classes and I settled on Khan Academy. So I'll link that below if you're interested in learning SQL, but it's free. The only downside is they don't have solution videos, but if you struggle with a problem, let me know because I still have all the answers that I kept in my little notion template here. Now, Python was a little bit interesting because Python, you can do a lot of different things. Basically how it works is you import these things called libraries or modules and they do different, they focus on different things. So for data science, and since I'm in data science, I use pandas and numpy, which you're like, what the frick <laughs> are those? But basically you import it and you can do, it has certain um, op actions and options and things that you learn the library. So you learn kind of the basics of Python, but really where you get down to the actual learning is you learn pandas, you learn numpy, like those are the things you actually learn to code in. Now I took the basic Udemy Python class. I'll link it below. It was, a, it was like 10 projects in Python. It was really good. I enjoyed it. I wanted to focus on broad, like what can you do with Python? Because I had never seen that language or used it before. So I wanted like a broad class. But if you're like focused in data science, do one that's geared towards data science. So that's just my recommendation to you. Lastly, I'm working on C Sharp now. So I have taken the Scott Hanselman has a great three part series on C Sharp and .NET basically on YouTube for free. So I love free classes, especially when they're good. And this guy is so good. He's just funny. Like I didn't feel like I was taking a coding class. He just was funny. And he also brings it down to like your level where you're like, He's like, oh, isn't it weird that we use semicolons here? Or they'll just make fun of the language and the differences between uh, C Sharp and like TypeScript, for example. So it was really engaging, like 10 out of 10 recommend for like an introductory level, like course, or just to see how C Sharp works. But basically you use C Sharp and .NET to make web applications. And that's what I'm trying to do for my job. So I thought that this would be a good time to learn it. So I have three main tips, basically, if you want to do this 100 days of code challenge. 
The first one is to line up your classes. You want to have like probably one full course and a backup course if you don't fin or if you finish the first one. That is a recommendation to you because you're going to like kind of figure out that it's really hard to do without an actual class to follow along. And then the second tip is to not get super ahead and crazy on the first couple days because you're going to want to be like, oh my gosh, I want to do three hours of coding and just like get a head start. Do not do that. That is the best way to burn yourself out. I do 20 to 30 minutes a day, 15 sometimes. Is it cheating? I don't know. So 30 minutes, 15 to 30 minutes a day and really stop yourself because there are days where I'm like, I'm like, oh, I could totally finish this whole thing. Don't do it. Don't do it. Save it for tomorrow. And that is how you keep the consistency part. Now you can take a day off. Like I, I got COVID during this. Okay. I took a couple days off. Sue me. Like it's more for your learning. There's no set rules. I don't think so. Just like take whatever time you need, but don't skip more than two days. Like you'll lose it and have a tracker where you check it off and keep yourself accountable. And the last tip is to document it on Twitter. I'm telling you, there's so many people doing this challenge. There's so many people who are interested in programming, like document it on Twitter, throw yourself out there. There are a couple of my tweets that went kind of crazy where I'm like, what the heck is happening? You know, most of it's like, okay, you get five likes and all of a sudden like maybe day 50, there's like 300 and you're like, what the heck's going on? But it's really fun and you'll meet people who are focused on the same language as you are. So you'll start to build this community and people will reach out. It's a really good time. So totally recommend. As I mentioned before, I learned web development and React using She Codes. So I will link the video I did on a review of the entire series because I took everything. I went from, there's four classes. I took all four of them, which was very expensive, but 100% worth it. I will link that video here and I will put the, the little discount code below. I think it's like 20% off. So use that if you want to sign up for those classes. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time.